that will be very difficult because it's going to require an incredible amount of consistency to stay as world number one all through uh, the year. So good luck to Jason Day with that. Uh, for Jordan Spieth, last year was very disappointing. Yeah. You'll, be, you'll be the first to admit it. Uh, he didn't have a great year at all. So you'll be looking to bounce back as well too and see how he performs. Uh, it's going to be very interesting, yeah. Cecilia. Uh, for me, I think these three guys, you know, uh, alongside Ricky Fowler, alongside probably uh, Bobo Watson as well, so we'll be the guys to really, you know, watch out for Rory the PGA Tour. Kind of Rory McIlroy as well, so I just, yes, yeah, <laughs> keep my mind. Rory McIlroy as well, too. I uh, didn't have a great uh, 2016 yeah, as well, too. So that's one to watch out for as well. But the one, uh, Dustin Johnson is the guy that he's really not under any pressure no. because he won a, a major US Open last year. And if I, okay, this year, I'll just relax, just take it, one game at a time and see what's going to get them from here. PJ Player of the Year award, that was what he won last year. And three of them came together and they're thinking of how they definitely want to have a better 2017. Let's listen to them. When the ball hit, touched down in, in 2017 started, um, it was still a great year in 16, but um, I learned a lot uh, on both ends of things, highs and lows, which I didn't really have many lows in 15. And before that, it was just trying to, to climb up to the, the top level. Um, so I learned a lot from the highs and lows. And um, therefore, I think I can use that to my advantage this year and, and on. I think the biggest thing for me is to, you know, obviously, it was great. it's great to see that you finished number one at the end of the year. Um, but I'd like to go a full year, you know, not just go half a year and get to and, and finish at number one because um, even though it's great, but I... I'd like to go a full year and, and then just slowly build on that. You know, I, I know what I need to do. I just need to keep working hard and practicing and, and hopefully the results, um, you know, come with the, the process. But, you know, that's one of the goals this year. Is obviously the goals are, you know, obviously to win, win majors and, and um, win as much as I can, but win majors and, and try and stay number one for the whole year. You know, the, the best part about it is I'm not going there to, to get my first major. I've, I've got one, so... You know, I'm not, I'm not still trying to win one. I've already won one. I know what it takes. I know, you know, I'd, I'd put myself in position a lot of times before, but just never really finished one off. And um, so so I feel like, you know, obviously I've got the game to contend in the, the majors. and But, you know, it's still all about, you know, you've you got to execute golf shots. Uh, that's the way it is. He's not under pressure. Now, no from pressure. that, we move straight to football. Achapakonze in the Brazilian team, uh, club side, actually lost almost all the players, save for two who survived that crash. They have started signing new players. They want to have signing 20 new players for right now. Started signing some new ones, and they have to reserve uh, two numbers for, numbers for the two survivors of the uh, crash. That's if they can. Play again. That's coming from the director of football. That was what he said on Tuesday when most of the players were unveiled. The incident mm. that happened on November 28th is still very fresh in the memories of most of the of the ones who actually survived the uh, crash in Colombia. But they're moving on now. Several new players presented at the press conference on Tuesday night. Rossi, Pereira, Natsin, Douglas Gulli were one. Some of those players who you know, were signed for the club. Mm. More like starting all over again. Yeah, I mean, that's what it is, uh, Cecilia. They're starting yeah. all over again. I mean, they lost uh, the bulk of the team, you know, that, during that very unfortunate uh, playing crash. And so, uh, and the sports has been incredible from, you know, from the footballing world uh, for Chapecoense. Uh, it's a new chapter for them, obviously, but it's very unfortunate. And um, what is very interesting for me is uh, the director of football, Rick Costa, saying, um, the centre back that survived as NATO mm -hmm. and the full back Alan Ross Chill, as well as the goalkeeper Jackson Foreman, those three guys, the Jesses, will be reserved. No player will be allowed to use those, those Jesses because they still believe that they can make a return uh, to football. That's very uh, touching uh, right there. I like that one a lot. But uh, apart from that, um, we're wishing Chapel Quentin. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, we're just wishing them the best. Let's see how they will pick. You know, pick up from that very uh, unfortunate uh, tragedy. They will definitely begin their preseason training this Friday, and some junior players will definitely be joining in the preseason training, and also the ones that have been newly signed and they had to resort to loans. Some clubs cooperated with them, loaning yeah. them players and all that, so that they'll be able to build a team for the new season. And hopefully, they should be able to move up from there 
and stay on. And well, the thing is, uh, I think this proposal that they will not be relegated in the last three years is this still going to work? Yeah, we'll be, I mean, those are the things uh, we will. You will expect a, a decision on that uh, later on. But like I said, uh, the support uh, from the footballing world has been uh, remarkable. Uh, hopefully that support continues until Chapequense, you know, uh, are able to uh, get back on their feet uh, fully. Yeah, the report is that the club have actually rejected that immunity from relegation in the Brazilian area for three years. But I think they should have accepted that because that would definitely help them to really focus on building a new team, getting new players, getting back into the league, and that will also heal a whole lot. Maybe they don't just want to ask for too much because after they got that trophy, that, you know, if it's a thing that they couldn't play, but if it, that should be enough consolation for all of them. What from there, I'm straight to tennis now. Well, Andy Murray, Novak Djokovic, both of them are flying high in Doha, in Qatar. And the thing is, we have these two players who happens to be the best right now, one and two. Playing in the same tournament, the likelihood that they definitely meet in the finals is always there. That's what everyone is looking forward to. For mm -hmm. Novak Djokovic, he had to bridge through uh, against Horatio Zabelos 6-3, 6-4. Easy one for him. <laughs> yeah, I mean, come on. Uh, Djokovic is doing what is expected of him at this stage of the competition. Through to the quarterfinals, very easy against um, his opponent. He is um, um, not uh, the most... Uh, yeah. Uh, popular, not the yeah, best uh, player out there. So, no surprises at all that Djokovic is true uh, to the quarterfinals of the Qatar Open. But for Andy Murray, it was a lot tougher for, yeah. for him. 7-5, seven, 7-6, seven, seven, six, six, seven, seven, five. Five. He had to really Pretty battle. Close. He had to battle uh, to defeat uh, his Austrian opponent, Gerard Melzer. Tough game for Andy Murray, but like champions, <laughs> do, they always find a way to win. And that's exactly what he did. But after that game, to me, Ademarie looked a bit, um, you know, Sire. jaded. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so... Maybe because um, it's the beginning of the season. I mean, it's just the start of the season. Why, we don't know why it looked that way. So trying to get into the groove. Okay, yeah. So, um, for me, champions find a way of winning. Yeah, and that's exactly what he's done. That's 20 wins, 26 wins, 26. actually, you know. And counting for Andy Murray, it's incredible uh, what he's been able to do uh, for last year. So he's going to end it. I mean, we'll find out. We'll, fi <laughs> we'll, come, we'll come and talk about who is likely uh, to end Andy Murray's and winning streak after this break. Stay with us.